one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. I know and I believe that your heart has been moved in this morning, sir. Amen. You ought to have taken root and started sprouting out by now as the Word of God has been proclaimed this morning. It's necessary. It's necessary that the Word of God begin at us. Amen? Amen. Because we have to carry it to our brothers and sisters in, in, in the world. Amen? Amen? Let us look briefly at the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, and it's uh, fifth chapter, look around 23, 24 verse. 1 Thessalonians, Amen. Amen and Amen. Twenty-third and twenty-fourth verses. Everybody ready? Amen. 23rd verse we have these words and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ faithful is he that, that calleth you who also will do it. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. Faithful is he that will call you, that has called you, call it you, who will also do it. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us think about a subject that say all of you. All, all of you. you. When we look into the heart and mind of God, we find that He wants us to have a daily walk. Amen? Amen. He wants our daily walk to be in Him, in the Lord. Amen? Amen. When we find ourselves on this treacherous terrain called life, mm -hmm. where we find all manner of situations and circumstances going on, then we'll find ourselves correcting our walk. Amen? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we always think that we should know everything and everything should be mindful to us, but there are some things that belong to God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Some things that we don't need to know. We, 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 if we knew the day Jesus was coming back, what would we do? <coughs> Some of us would lay our hair down and wait right till time to punch the clock, amen? amen. And then get it right. But it just ain't necessary for you to know when he's coming back. It's necessary to know that he is coming back. Amen. And he's coming back after a people that is prepared to return with him. Amen. amen. So we, we, we wanna we wanna put ourselves in a position where we will be accepted when he returns. When we put ourselves in a position to know that when the Lord come back, he gonna come back how? Thief in the night. A, come on, Doc. As a thief in the night. When you least expect him to come, when you think when you when you walking walking around the house man. When you're on your job, can't stand nobody. Mm -hmm. they, they got a friend, so who there it is? You will find yourself standing in the presence of God with the wrong attitude. Mm -hmm. And it's not good to practice. That's why it's a daily practice yeah. that you practice that he's coming today like you did yesterday. Paul talked to this Thessalonian church and told them that they had already, they're doing the walk. 
-hmm. They're doing the work. They're walking the walk. They're talking the talk. But you should do it in a manner where you're going to be in safety when Christ come back. Mm -hmm. Because when he come back, there's going to be some stuff going on that you don't want to be a part of. Right. Huh? Right. You don't want to be a part of it because it's going to be some destruction going on. It's going to be a even compared to look. And all y'all ladies know how it is when y'all in labor. Amen? Huh? It don't bother me none at all. I don't, I don't feel it like y'all feel it. Amen? But when you, if you know it, it's going to be in the same day. It's going to be just like that when Christ come back. It's going to be a lot of suffering going on. So, so but what do you want to be? You want to be safe in Christ Jesus away from all the obstruction. You want to be like a precious child of God. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because he's coming back as a thief Amen. in the night. Y'all be asleep. Y'all don't know what it is to be in the night. But you got the folk that just get up when it get night. Oh. Roam all night long. Just like the adversaries, seeking whom they can devour. So you find yourself as a, a getting up in the middle of the night when you're on the wrong page. Mm -hmm. When you find yourself. Y'all know, what do the children want? What do kids want to do better to get out of school? Huh? They want to stay up all night long. I don't know what the big thing is about it, do you? No, no. What is it? Oh, yeah, you know. That's what you have presented to them. Go to bed. You taught them to go to bed all their life. And now they, they feel like it's a, it's a pleasure to be able to stay up. But they don't still don't want to get up in the morning. I tell my boy all the time, I say, look at him. I say, that same body that you got when you go to school is the same body you got when you out. If it need eight hours when you in school, it need eight hours when you out of school. That's right. That's right. In other words, you, you, you practice a certain way of living and become what? Y'all yeah, see some of them star basketball players and football players on the field, don't you? Mm -hmm. And you wish you could do what they could do? Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those of you that like basketball and football, you know, I can care less about either one. Because my daddy made me get on the wood truck. I don't care nothing about Hollywood no more. <laughs> but those guys put in the effort and the time to be able you, you see them when they run that, that 40 or 50 yard run and run straight to the oxygen tank when they, when they do it to replenish themselves where they can do it again some of them take dance lessons where they can maneuver themselves and, and if you don't think you have to do these things in Christ Jesus to make yourself what Christ wants you to be, you're sadly mistaken. And it's easy to close out your mind to righteousness for what's in the world. Easy. We do it day in and we do it day out. And I'll give you a good example. How many times this week did you open your Bible? How many times this week did you turn your TV on? How many hours did you spend reading your Bible? How many hours did you spend watching your TV? See if it matches up, if it comes anywhere close to where it should be. God is looking at you in your everyday life. He will not be deceived. He's not going to be able to mark him. You can mark yourself for destruction. If you don't practice the word of God as you know it. Like this Thessalonian. Paul say, you have carried it out since the day you heard it. You make us proud. When we find ourselves pressing towards that mark of a higher calling in Christ Jesus, we'll find ourselves having a sober mind. I don't mean that you, you know, you know your mind don't have to have alcohol or drugs for not for not be sober, right? Mm -hmm. Just your everyday thinking. If you think it's something evil about your brother or your sister, you're not sober. You're not sober. 
that God is requiring us to be sober. So when things go on, if you put your hand in the fire, you quickly remove it. Amen? Amen. It should be the same instance when you find yourself outside of the will of God. You should remove yourself as quickly as you got there. Amen? Amen. And you should have something where people recognize you. Know who you are and know who you are. Amen? Amen. When, you have, when you have faith and love and righteousness and, and, and you have the helmet of hope, you're just a saved person. When you're a saved person, you carry yourself differently. Mm -hmm. I tell you again, my mama told me when I was on the mornings, bitch, not to get off because she did not see a change in me. When God is ruling in your life, you have a different answer. You have a different walk of life. You're humble, you're meek, you're kind, you're long-suffering. You forbear one another because you love them. And this is just the word and the will of God that we love one another with a pure heart. Amen? Amen. And that we don't do like the world. A lot of times we're so worried about things that we can't control, that we can't do anything about because we don't have faith in God. We don't trust Him to do his business. But you read it this morning, right? Is God what? Faithful. God is faithful. If you just believe in him, if you keep your heart and your mind focused in him, like you do some of this other junk that's going on in the world, you'll find yourself being a better Christian. People will know who you are on the basketball court. They'll know who you are when you're playing football or even when you're in the kitchen cooking. Amen. You ever seen anybody doing, doing, doing work and mad because they got to do it? You, you'll find yourself pressing towards a mark. People will, will love you. And, and you, you remember what the girl said when, when, uh, when she was working and her sister was just sitting there at Jesus' feet? Huh? Everybody wasn't called to do what you do. That's why it's special to you. That's why you have a passion for it. So just as Jesus reflected the heart when she said, you may not come help me in so many words. <clears throat> that wasn't her calling. But whatever your calling is, whatever it is that you should be doing in Christ Jesus, you should be doing it with your whole heart. And collectively as a body in Christ Jesus, that you be doing the things that's going to be pleasing unto the Lord. And as you admonish one another, you'll be admonishing one him. As you lift one another and exalt one another. Pastor had it on the board this morning. Did y'all see the arrow? Up and down, crossway. When you line up with God, as you line up with your fellow man, pay, pay attention now. He said that the Lord will admonish you and esteem you very highly in love because of your work sake. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Just believe God for who he is. Don't trust in yourself. But I tell you, lean up to your own understanding. When you're thinking whatever you're thinking about somebody else, you are leaning to your own understanding of the situation. Because nine times out of ten, they're going to tell you when you confront them, that ain't what I was thinking, that ain't what I felt about that situation. <laughs> so we find ourselves <coughs> at God esteeming each other highly for, for our work's sake and be at peace among yourself. You need to have a peace about yourself. Not, not that, you know, we got a competition thing going now, don't we? Y'all may not know it. I can tell you right now, my, little, my, my, my son, Rohan, he can't do nothing unless he want to be competitive about it. Amen? Amen. 
But just on the other hand, in the Lord, what do you do? When, when we were little boys, we knew who could run the fastest. We knew who could jump the highest. We knew all the things about one another. And you guess what we were doing when we got ready to play game? We were drawing a line. We didn't have the toys y'all got, the games y'all got, the, the laptops and the, all of the iPads and things, and the cell phones y'all got to play on that. We draw a line in the dirt. And I'd stand behind the line if I could outrun you and let you get so far in front of the line. But now we happy, we beat somebody I already know we know more than they do. All we want to do is win, win, win. Whether it's a good win or a bad win. But when we start taking care of one another, <coughs> excuse me, taking care of one another, esteeming one another, Better than oneself. Just imagine the life that we will be living in Jesus Christ. Then we could have that peace among ourselves. One writer said, peace that surpasses all understanding. When we find ourselves, he said, now what we need to do, when we find our brothers and sisters walking contrary, Warn them. You ain't their you ain't their mama, you ain't their daddy, you ain't their God, you ain't their Lord. But you can warn them. The writer said, warn them. Amen? Amen. We exalt you, brethren. Warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. What's the flip side of it? I ain't got time. If you ain't doing what I think you ought to be doing, I blow you off. But then I got to realize who I'm working for when I start blowing off the weak and the feeble mind. Yeah. Huh? When I start getting rid of folks that God has accepted. And God takes the, the least of people that make the best of people. Amen? Amen. Huh? Stop rendering people be mean to you. Be, you be mean to them back. That's not the way of God. No. Render to no man evil for evil. Amen. Huh? Amen. But follow that which is good. Right. Do the things that's right. In the sight of God. Amen? Amen. Do it among yourselves in the church and out in the world as well. To all men. Don't render to no man what he do to you. And then you ought to be happy about it. The Bible says rejoice evermore. Because you're aware of what God is doing and how he's working in your life. How he's carrying it out. You realize that he woke you up this morning. You realize that he put food on your table. You realize that he didn't let you shake your dead husband or your dead wife this morning. You, 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 you conscious. Your mind is sober to what God is doing. And then you ought to be doing what? What is it that we ought to do most of all? Pray without ceasing. Never stop praying. Just be a common believer in Christ Jesus. Stop trying to exalt yourself above your brothers and your sisters and be a believer in Christ Jesus and magnify one another. Guess what? If I scratch your back and you scratch mine, guess who gets you? Nobody. Everybody's satisfied. You know the story that Pastor Bowman told about the room full of folks with the long hound spoon? Did y'all get it? One room was full of folks that had what? Long hound spoons? Everybody in the room was poor. He went to the next room. Everybody had long hair and spoon. Everybody was fat. Why? The one with the long hair, with, with the one that was fat, were feeding each other. The one that was skinny was too big to try to feed themselves with a spoon they couldn't reach their mouth with. Right. And that, that's the nature of the world. I'm too big to try to lift me and exalt me when I can lift somebody else. Because God is saying, if you're going to be blessed, who's going to bless you? Your brothers and your sisters shall men pour into your bosom. My, my daughter told me the other day, said, Daddy, said, the lady, 
uh, wrote me a check for thirteen thousand dollars. I said, yeah. And then she went on to say, but you know this and this and this and this. I say, God saw you all the time. You were working and going somewhere trying to help somebody and didn't do nothing for yourself. You actually depleted yourself to make sure that you got information to other people. So don't think it's just out of a whim. God has promised these things would happen. If you obey him, if you do his will. So when we find ourselves praying without ceasing, thanking God no matter what the situations are, no matter what the circumstances are, then we find that we be doing the will of God. Huh? We be doing the will of God. It's the will of Jesus Christ concerning you. This is how he wants you to live your life. Or his life. Because Paul said, not I, but Christ that lived in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live to the glory of the Son of God who gave himself for me. When I find myself pressing, you know, when I, when you know how it is when you say, I'm going to do it. Well, the Holy Spirit come tell you something. First thing, you just say, I ain't going to do nothing because they ain't going to act right. <laughs> Y'all talked about it this morning. Amen? What did you want to do when, when God told him to go to the middle? Y'all didn't like them folk. No, them folk wasn't going to do what right. They wasn't going to do this. They wasn't going to do that. Uh, you know how they are. Your job is to preach the word of God. To do the will of God. Let God will be done over your will. Then you'll find yourself carrying out things that don't just don't seem right. I constantly look back at my mom and think about how dumb I used to think she was. Because she put God's will above her will. She let folks miss you and all the beauty and all said, that's all right, baby. All of them, women out of the neighborhood, fight you over there and move that stuff if you want to see what happens. That's all right, baby. God, God knows. Golly, but you can run over. You know, we got that kind of love for folks, right, man? Amen. That we'll, 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 we'll see them protected and God rejected, amen? amen. But we got to have a love in our hearts that we're going to see God's will over anybody else's will, amen? amen. amen. And then, then the writer got so, so, so bold in his talking, he said, I want you to, to abstain, mm. reject yourself from all appearances of evil. Mm -hmm. If it looked like it ain't right, you get out of that situation. It don't feel right. Get out of that situation. Don't just go on and drive yourself till you, till you fall in the ditch. The writer is pushing us to carry out God's will. Preach God's word. Do the things and hold fast to the things that are good. Amen? Amen. To do those things. And to prove the will of God. It can be done. God is expecting his people to do it. Amen? Amen. He's pressing towards a mark of a higher calling in you. When you stop laying around with the wrong stuff. Oh, I was just over there. I used to tell the people when they used to say, well, uh, you go to Gallimore with me and eat? I would always say no. And they would always, ooh, they'd ride me out real bad about that, you know. I say, well, I say, I imagine I'd go to Gallimore and eat, you know. I imagine it could, but if I come out under that hill and one of the church members see me coming out under the hill, the first thing they're going to think, uh, my, my appearance ain't going to look good, is it? No, it ain't going to look good. I might have went out there and, and, and say somebody or Pay some money for somebody that lost all their money. But the appearance of evil is there. So why, 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 why put yourself in that situation? But Paul said it like this, that every man be persuaded by his own opinion, but let it be a good one. Let it be based in the word of God. Let God's word be what's focusing and what's guiding you through life. Amen? Amen. And the very God of peace 
sanctify you holy by the word and prayer. Let's look at Revelation 22. We're going to hurry up and get out of here in a minute. Y'all say sit down anytime y'all want. I know y'all had the word this morning. Amen. I ain't no question about it. 22, 6, 6. Look, start looking at that 6 verse. Amen. Amen. And he said unto me, These things saying, these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to show unto his servant the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings and of the prophecy of this book. Y'all hear? And I, John, saw these things and heard these things. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Amen? Amen. Then said he unto me, Look out, y'all. See thou, do it not. For I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them was keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. Stop worshiping people. Yeah. Worship God. The angel rejected the worship. Any man of God that's being worshipped is going to reject it. Amen? Amen? And he said unto me, seal not the things, seal not the saying of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be, be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to as his work shall be. You're going to get paid for what you're doing in the Lord. Amen? Amen. I am Alpha. I started this thing. I am Omega. I ended this thing. I am the beginning and the end. The first and the last. Nobody has any say so when God says that's how it is. That's right. You can't change it. He went on to tell them not to add. He said, Blessed are they that do the commandments that they may have right to the tree of life. All that you've been talking about this morning based on doing the will of God. Amen? Amen. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Because you don't want to be out there where the dogs are mm -hmm. and the sorcerers are and the homeowners are and the murderers are, and the idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. You don't want to be out there. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. Follow me. Do what I say. Keep my commandments yeah. according to God's will. Amen? Amen? Do what God wants you to do. And you'll find yourself walking in the way of God. Amen? Amen. Amen? The word and prayer is what we need to do. And it's for all of us. Amen? Amen. It's for each and every one of us. It's not just for the pastors going to the study and studying week in and day in and day out. It's not just for the pastor. It's not just for the pastor to make sure that the members are thoroughly furnished with all good works. It, it's, it's our way. We should work together with the pastor to edify and build one another Amen. to where we need to be in Christ Jesus. Stop laying down on the job. You ever got fired? They fired you because they felt like you weren't doing what you're supposed to do or you weren't productive enough. Mm -hmm. Or they just ran out of work for you. Did 
can't call it lay off. You don't call it fire. Amen? Amen. But God is going to come back one day. He's going to pay every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, not by what somebody did to you, not by how mean somebody was to you, mm -hmm. but he's going to pay you for the work that you did. So when you have the love of God in your heart, exercise it. That's all he's saying. Exercise the love of God in your heart. And what's in your heart will come out of your mouth. And if you got the wrong thing coming out of your mouth, check your heart. You got the wrong attitude, check your heart. You'll find that God has made it so for all of us. And the writer says it like this. He says, God has commended his love towards us. Amen? Because somebody might not get it. Somebody might decide that they're too smart for God. They, they don't need to have love in their heart for their fellow man. They don't need to uh, 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 serve one another. But that's, that's your own choice. But remember that you're making a choice each and every day of your life, who you serve. You don't just make a choice on Sunday morning. You make a choice each and every day of your life. And my prayer is that your choice will be for the one that loved you and gave himself for you. He didn't take the punishment for you to be lost. For you to miss your salvation. He did it where you could be in peace. That you could have a joy that passes all understanding. And don't, don't expect the world to know what, what why you got the smile on your face and know you ain't got no food in your house. Don't expect the world to know. Don't expect them to understand. When they call you crazy, Paul said, yeah, Paul did say we were fools for Christ. Amen. Yeah, that's right. And when we find ourselves accepting him, the one that suffered and died on Calvary, for not just for us, but for the sins of the whole world. Mm -hmm. Such a brutal death. But I'm glad he was in a barred grave. Because he did get up. And he declared that all power was given unto him in heaven and in earth. Why follow anybody else? Why? Why try? Jesus is not in a bottle. He's not in a wrap. He's not in a plastic capsule. He's not in pill form. But he's in your heart with the love that you have for him that passed out to your fellow man. Amen? Amen. So let us work hard for one another. Mm -hmm. To help one another. You know, you, you know, I tell y'all, one of the things that attracted, attracts me to Pastor Bone is I asked him the other day, he was sitting in there Friday, and that dude got the grinning so hard. Yeah, what you sitting there grinning for, man? <laughs> I mean, this dude tripping out because somebody else getting hit. Yeah. And that's what we need in our lives is to see others better than ourselves. That's right. And when we do, God is going to admonish us highly. He's going to see us. And we ain't going to have trials and tribulations. Because in the world, you're going to have those things. But you, you got to see past the world. Amen? Amen. Paul, to, Paul told us, I don't want you to be sad like the other folks in the world that have no hope. Always let your hope and your faith be in Christ Jesus. Not in the things that you see. Anything you put your hand on, one day you're going to leave him. Right. One day you're going to put your hand on it and put it in the garbage. Mm -hmm. you, you don't believe it? You had some good chicken and gravy and pork chops and steak. One day you didn't finish it all, but when you went back there and looked at it, the bowl that took it over, you put it in the, in the garbage, in the trash can. Yeah. But if you put your heart and your mind and your faith in Jesus Christ, You'll have a hold of something that nothing will deteriorate. Amen. Nothing will destroy. Jesus Christ has made it fit for all. Amen. 
Let us accept him. Thank you. God bless you. Keep it.